In this video, I'm going to talk about springs, the spring force, spring constant, and the elastic potential energy. Um, so first, let's talk about um, what is a spring. A spring is something that stretches or compresses. Um, so you could think about um, something that is elastic uh, that would only stretch. You could think about the shock absorbers in your car, which um, compress, uh, or something that um, is loaded, um, such as this, that um, once we put the cup on here, uh, then we can displace the, um, the object and it will both stretch and compress. It'll bounce up and down. All right, so um, a few things worth talking about. First, um, when we talk about springs, we don't really care about the length of the spring, um, how long the spring is of itself. We care about how much the spring stretches or compresses, and so that stretching distance we call x, the distance from the equilibrium position. Um, so oftentimes equilibrium position will denote as x naught. All right, so let's talk about the force of the spring. Um, we can create an experiment where you start with a spring and you put some mass on it. That spring will stretch and then you'll measure the distance. Um, you increase the force by changing the mass here and you measure the distance again. When you do that experiment, you can create a graph of the um, stretch of the spring in centimeters or meters, let's say meters, and the force in newtons that you um, apply to that spring by adding the mass to the bottom of it. When we talk about an ideal spring, um, this graph will look um, like a straight line um, that goes through zero. Now the slope of this line tells you the spring constant. We use the variable k to denote the spring constant. Um, so the slope would be the rise over the run or the force over the um, displacement or the stretch and that equals k. This spring constant k has units of newtons per meters and it basically tells you how stretchy, how easy, how hard it is it for that spring to either be um, stretched or compressed. And so regular values of that spring constant can vary from one newton meter uh, all the way to like one times 10 to the six newton meters. So um, this is an incredibly variable constant. From this, we can get what the spring force and equation of the spring force, which is F equals, and I'm gonna put a space here, Kx. Now, the important thing to remember with talking about the spring force is that this is a negative. It's a negative because the spring force is restoring. So if you think about um, my cup again, if I were to pull down on this, the force is upward. The spring force is opposite the displacement because that spring is gonna pull it back up. If I were to compress something, that spring force is gonna push backwards. And so the spring force is always opposite the direction of the displacement, um, which that's what it means to be a restoring force. Okay. So F equals negative Kx. When we wanna talk about the energy of a spring, um, we use the spring constant again, and the energy of a spring is also called the elastic potential energy. And that is just um, E, E, L, or E, S, is one half Kx squared, where X, is, again, is not the length of the spring, but the displacement from equilibrium. When we talk about simple harmonic motion, we'll talk more about this idea of a restoring force and what happens when things bounce up and down or move sideways on a frictionless surface. But for now, um, this is all you're gonna need to know when we're talking about energy. So I used the word ideal when describing um, all of these equations and the spring and this graph. Um, in physics, we really only deal with ideal springs. Um, the biggest thing about an ideal spring is that it is massless, um, which means um, it also has no weight. Um, these, this uh, is called Hooke's Law. 
this holds, um, so sp springs that are ideal follow this, um, which means like if you look at my coffee cup, um, if I were to make my coffee cup much, um, much heavier, this, this would no longer stretch. And so this elastic is only ideal in a certain range. The other big thing um, is most apparent when graphing this force um, versus the displacement or the stretch or compression of the spring is that this line goes through zero, which means that immediately once I add some sort of mass, this will start to stretch. Um, you could think of this as uh, my coffee cup on this string again, um, but let's hold it the other way. Um, if I pull on this, um, you could imagine that there might be a spring that takes some amount of force added to it before it will begin to stretch in a measurable amount. And so ideal springs, um, they don't require a load to be placed on them before they start to stretch. Um, in an experiment, if we were to do this in class, you most likely would see this meaning that it doesn't stretch, it doesn't stretch, it doesn't stretch, it doesn't stretch, and then once you add a um, significant amount of mass to the end of that spring, then you'll start to be able to measure the stretch. That is a non-ideal spring. We are only dealing with ideal springs in this class.